All right, welcome to the podcast. I'm Nermeen, your host of the Wildly Successful Law Firm. And as you can see, I'm here and joined by my friend and colleague, Diana Murphy, who is a coach. This is a very special episode that we are bringing for you today. Hey, law firm owners, this is Nermeen, law firm strategist and host of the Wildly Successful Law Firm podcast. This podcast is for law firm owners who are tired of the same bad law firm advice that's outdated and doesn't apply to your small law firm. We'll discuss everything there is to know about your law firm, including your numbers, hiring, operations, especially how to think, act, and behave like a CEO, not just a lawyer who happens to own a business. I'm here to talk about strategy and not your feelings. So here we go. Before I go into the details of it, we're going to first have a little introduction from Diana. So Diana, please tell us about who you are, what all right. you do, all the good stuff. All right. I'm a solopreneur, like those lawyers that bring out their shingle and do life by themselves. And I have loved the journey. I have been a coach for eight years and I started in more a wellness space because that was my transformation. But I am digging in because what I had seen with owners, I love working with business owners and corporate leaders where they are getting stuck and in their own way. And I started that in the wellness space, but I realized we were always solving things with mindset. And mm -hmm. so I am the mindset support and one-on-one -on -one coach for anyone that's a business owner and wants something next and they're a little stuck or are really challenged by a transition that has really rocked them and they don't want it to rock their business. Yeah. So that's kind of the business I'm in. Okay. That's awesome. And as you know, Dana has been doing this for a while and part of the reason why I wanted her to join me on the podcast today was I know that there's a lot of people selling right now and you've got a lot of options on who you can work with. I think it's incredibly important that you evaluate your options effectively. Mm -hmm. So part of this conversation is for you to be able to hear really in reality, the difference between a consultant and a coach. And I'm going to present some examples and I'm going to tell you how a consultant would approach it. And then you're going to hear how Diana, a wonderful coach is going to approach it as well. And then from there, you will actually be able to think deeper about what it is that you need at this moment in your law firm. I will tell you in my experience, I've worked with some attorneys who, when I talk to them about pricing or just something, I've hit some sort of a nerve and then they've started to cry. <laughs> and that for me is just a huge sign of, okay, maybe you're not ready for, for a consultant. Maybe what you need is something else. And so wherever you are in your growth journey, for your practice, for yourself, for your life, wherever you are, I just want you to know that you have these tools and these people who are specialized to help you. I can't wait. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, can't wait to help you. In the right way. And you don't have to do it alone, right? Which yeah. is what I say all the time is you don't have to go through, you know, YouTube and download every video, watch every video on how to grow your law firm. Like, that's one way of doing it, but it's not going to be the most effective. So, really, that's what, you know, Diana and I are here for. Yeah. So... Let's go through example number one. Great. Now, a lot of this conversation is going to be wrapping up money month, which was January. And we are here to talk a lot about money mindset specifically. And I will tell you that from a consultant's perspective, you should have already downloaded this by now. It's the hourly rate guide. Essentially your hourly rate, what you should be charging to your clients is based on three things. Your location, your practice area, and the number of years that you've been in practice. It's really that simple. Now, that guide is gonna tell you, you should be charging 600 plus an hour, 300 plus an hour. It's gonna vary on all of those factors. That is a consultant's approach to your pricing. It is very numbers based. It is data based, right? Now, I can tell you, I know Diana <laughs> has a different approach. And they're all I do. valid. Okay, <laughs> that's not to say one is better than the other. No. It's just this is as far as the road goes for a consultant, right? This is where I stop. I tell you the number. I might be able to help you draft the email to your clients. Let I might be able to sit on the call while you send that email to your clients, <laughs> but you then actually have to charge those rates. <laughs> Right. And stand in that rate. Exactly. <laughs> so that's, I love that you brought this topic up because it's something that I learned from my own experience and now I'm really helping my clients. 
we, when we start something new and we're selling our first matter, or we're selling our first deal, and someone tells us that we should be charging $600 an hour, we've never billed personally, especially if you're coming from corporate, you never personally have asked for that. Yeah. And so it rocks your nervous system. So what I want to share is if you are working with a consultant and having some of these crying fits, but we'll just be dramatic. Yeah. When you're crying about what your, your consultant is sharing with you that you should do and you're wondering either why you're hesitating, why it feels scary, all those things are normal, normal responses. Whenever we go into something very new that we've not done before, our brain does two things. It has amnesia and it wants to fight or flight. Mm -hmm. And I just want to normalize the money conversation. I did have coaches telling me when I was learning to charge proper rates that, oh, it's just math. It's not. It, because it does trigger mm -hmm. our fear that we can't, like, are we worth that much? Mm -hmm. Are we, can we do that? And you're going to, I think the best advice in fast growth is growing as quickly as you can into the identity of someone that charges $600 an hour. Some of my clients that have work like you do, I will suggest that even for two months, they charge 300 and start closing and it's better than no money mm -hmm. when they're too scared to start talking about the, the big money amounts. So mm -hmm. I think sometimes there's growth of not over activating your nervous system in multiplying your prices too often. Yeah. I'll talk about raising my own prices for three months before I literally do it. And then I will do it on a call with a client where I know it's the right time. Yeah. It's so, it's an energetic thing for me too, yeah. of just being ready to do it and why. Yeah, and I think that's so important everything that Diana is saying because, you know, when you work for a big law firm or another law firm and now you've stepped out on your own, so many attorneys I know will charge just a couple hundred bucks less than what the big guys charge in the big firms because they're trying to pull in business. But here's the thing, I talk to people who have charge that same rate, that day one rate at year five, year seven, year 10. And it's like, okay, do you understand that you've been charging these rates for a really long time and that yeah. you are severely underpriced in the market? I mean, think about that. You have five more years of experience, three more years of experience, and you are still charging the same that you did day one when you first started your practice. So I love this because if you're working with someone like Nermeen that's suggesting this, this is a way you could stand up for yourself and, and kind of coach, have your own coach support because you can say, I'm not ready to charge 600, so let's make a plan. And I think having a more deliberate plan, like for three months, I'm gonna see how that goes, see how many matters I close, see how many clients I bring in, and have a plan. And then you're gonna have that next like kind of little anxiety bump that this is the time to raise prices, but you're not doing it all at once, which really does shut people down. Mm -hmm. But then having a very deliberate growth plan. I was on a plan as a coach of doubling my prices, I think almost every three months. It mm -hmm. was way too fast for me. And it literally created, which I know we're gonna get into, a little bit of a roller coaster because energetically I was freaking myself out. Mm -hmm. So this is why I think it's so important to not charge where you feel really safe, but not charge where you feel totally freaked out because you will engage and be more of a magnet for closing with clients if you're right in the middle. Mm -hmm. Doing it a little bit scared, I think is really healthy. Yeah. But with a plan deliberately, because your costs are going up, you're exactly. supporting more, and you want to be working with more ideal clients and your ideal clients will feel led by you when you step into that bigger shoes for them. For sure. Now there's something really great that you said and I want to talk about this a little bit. So you are on the phone with a client or you are sitting across from them, but you know, it's pandemic time. So let's say you're on the phone with them, you're on Zoom with them and they say, okay, so great. So what do you charge for this trademark application? What are you going to charge me for you know this divorce and that little moment before you give that price you're gonna hear my voice which is gonna be you gotta charge more you gotta charge more but you're gonna be freaking out okay what do you say to help people get through that oh my god I can't believe I'm about to say this number okay there's two keep doing your work and if you are having a place where you're freezing this is a time to hire a coach to support you but the, the, the two little hints I give is decide ahead of time, write it on the paper, and do not waver, no matter what. 
and that has helped me a lot. Now, you heard me kind of say on the fly, so I will talk for three months that I'm going to charge this right amount. And with current clients, I don't do price increases quickly. And so I will have that ideal client and make that decision, but I really decide it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. So I write down my quotes and from, like if I'm doing something unique with a client, so I will write down what I know it feels really great to me and they should also practice saying it out loud. Okay. So even if they did it with themselves, if you go through your presentation, the things that, like, and this is why, this is what I'm going to give you, that if you say it more often, the way you're offering, if you're asked to speak and you know, you're going to say, and I'm an attorney for blank, you want to practice those things that normally trigger you because it's new and say them over and over in the shower and on the way in the car and energetically just get that nervousness as much out as you can. And remember, Doing it a little scared is very normal, so don't play safe. Do get in that energy. I'm, I'm bold enough and brave enough to start this business, continue this business, and, yeah. break, and charge it properly. Yeah. Clients love when we stand in our confidence, yeah. and so that is also helping the client. For we have sure. to remember that. That helps our client know that we can lead them. Yeah, so there's two really important tools that I wanted to point out here that Diana mentioned. One, write it down. Two, practice it out loud. Like not in your head, practice no, it because that doesn't count, right? Doesn't. Like you're just having a conversation with yourself. You need to hear Which is usually loud. a negative one. And so this is the one where we change that <laughs> yes. practice into vis like watching yes. what your body does when you say, I'm, and my fee is $600 an hour, and this is what we're gonna do. Yep, this is exactly. What do. Get used to hearing yourself say yeah. it because you've literally- Oh, I love that. Never heard yourself, yourself say, say it. it. <laughs> so when you're saying it out loud, that's what I that's what we want you to be doing yeah. is to be getting used to what it sounds like. Even sharing with friends mm -hmm. and um when I had price you know, again, I, I always have had my own coach. So it is like, okay, is it time to raise prices or mm -hmm. they bring up the conversation? But it's even sharing with family. Like I remember telling my kids what I was charging for coaching and it was fun to see their um uh-huh, that is what's going on here. And so it's really getting into that energy that this is what I'm about right now and just seeing what kind of makes you pull back, but that's just your body trying to be safe and just yeah. stepping into that. So that practice is really key. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, so now let's go to situation number okay. two that we know about happens a lot. Yes. All right, so a lot of attorneys that are listening to this, I know you are either plaintiff's personal injury attorneys or you are uh, you know, plaintiff's employment attorneys, those two, you get paid when your case is settled. I know that there's a lot of immigration attorneys that do H-1Bs and everything is cyclical. So you make a lot of money at the beginning of the year and then it kind of tapers off at the end of the year. When I look at your bank statements and I look at how much you're making month by month, this is what a consultant should be doing. Um, you know, they're looking at what's coming in and what's going out. When they're looking at what's coming in, they're seeing this, really high peak and then like a crash and then another kind of little peak and then a crash and so there's a lot of roller coastering that happens here and as a consultant my job is going to be to try to figure out what we can do to smooth that over now an example that i was giving diana was you know you might be an attorney that only does a specific kind of medical malpractice and you know, those cases typically take six months. You brought on four cases. They all look like they're gonna settle around the same time, six months out. But you still have payroll, office rent, health insurance, your own Business mortgage. Ownership. Business right? ownership, yes, yes, it's not for sissies. <laughs> yes, it's not, and you still have all these expenses. So how are you supposed to accommodate that, especially if you're not the greatest planner and you didn't expect that none of these were gonna settle in that six month period? One of the things that I recommend here is see if you can bring on a smaller case. If someone comes to your door, an already existing client also gets into a car accident, they say, hey, can you settle this for me? You know, looking at it, you know, looking at the insurance company, all right, this is an open and shut, three months, we'll clear it out. You can then collect that money. Are you a car accident attorney? No, but it's definitely one way to help smooth out some of those really steep, yeah. almost nothing, break even slash lose money. Yes. And that is how a consultant would approach the peaks and valleys. Yes. And I think coach. as new owners, those mm -hmm. getting scrappy and creative with how you create cash and just knowing I'm somebody who can provide for myself and I can take care of this. 
We never want there to be a long-term plan if your ideal client is very different. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also a great space to learn which type of law are you loving and what would you like more of. So I do think that being a general attorney and really testing all that, if you don't know yet in your bones what kind of work you mm -hmm. want to do long-term, but I, I just think this road is getting really wise about money and how long it lasts, but also that you know in that month you're going to be getting that money and not look at your accounts. I know that for me, if, you, if I look at my bank account right after I paid a coach and then did something else and I really wisely made those investments and then I look at, there's nothing that humans get triggered more from is like low bank accounts. Yep. So I think noticing, you're going to have those situations. All of the, I have them all the time. And so again, we want to normalize these human responses to those, those valleys and lows. And it's reassuring yourself this case is going well. You know, I'm going to be a person that starts rolling in and bringing clients more, you know, like looking at the year going, okay, my next six months is going to be steadier, just like she wants, mm -hmm. because you're bringing people on as you go along and not letting those zero months have anything to do with the way you're seeing yourself. Yeah. Like we really, that is where coaching is so powerful. What are you thinking when that goes to zero? And for me, I know it's, you feel like an imposter, you're always waiting for the money to come, mm -hmm. and that energy doesn't bring a new business either. Yeah, yeah. So that's where you just- Or it brings a just, really crappy business. Exactly, like the, and so we don't want to, yeah, and then they drain your energy and yes. you're really mad yes. at your job. Exactly. And you, we don't want to be, this is where you are doing this because you want to love your work again. Mm -hmm. So I just think having a very long range approach, not letting the zero months mean anything, and remembering that all of us started this way and don't let any news from the, the world tell you that having steady months is a real thing. No, business does not work that way. And looking at one thing that solves, so that we'll get some good hints here. What helped me was, was two things. I do a profit first mentality on my money. I literally have my bookkeeper do it with me. And now I know how long my money lasts. So yeah. you can look at that matter that's gonna solve in six and go, oh, and that's gonna carry me the rest of the year. Am I willing to wait? Yes, I can do this. This is my investment time. But it's also looking in three months of revenue instead of monthly all the time. Because I'll have a client, I'll literally think I'm gonna have a record month and a client will pay on the first of the next month. I'm like, damn. But I had the biggest quarter I've ever had, right? Yeah. And there's something about how we measure ourselves and that's, again, high achievers, we're all gonna be doing that but it's not letting that information, whenever I've gone to quarters, my business looks really steady. Yeah. And it's different every year, I don't know why, even mm -hmm. the same business, I've had the same people I've been serving for two to three years now, and I still have big Decembers and then low Decembers, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and but if I look at it as a quarter, everything's working. Yeah. That's the thought I want you to carry from this, like everything's working, I'm working hard, this is going to be steadier. Yeah, and there's something those are those early months that yeah, you know I'm speaking of for sure. And there's something that you said here that I think every single attorney listening to this is going to peek about, which is high achievers. You are all high achievers. You we, sat for the LSAT. You took the bar exam. You went through law school. You had professors who made you miserable. You yeah. Know, you worked for a big firm, and then you stepped out on your own. I mean, you are clearly a high achiever. And there is, I think, a really tough mental, yeah. inner, negative thought yeah. that comes especially with high achievers. And it's very hard for a consultant like me to say, hey, a, a low month is normal. Like, it's yeah. okay, we're gonna work on fixing it, but it's okay that it happened. There's an inner dialogue that comes from that that I cannot battle, right? Yeah. Like, that is something that you have to do and you have to manage and I want you to share with us Dana what are some tips that you give to your high achievers on how to manage like and then we can spiral right yeah. like one bad thing happens all of a sudden we've spiraled and we're like fighting with our significant others yelling at our kids not showing up on time staying oh. in bed the ties not tied properly you know then everything starts to fall so apart. what's happened in that moment and I hope this helps if it just helps one person you have that trigger, I'm not making money, and maybe one new client didn't sign. So you have this data, that is a circumstance, but it's triggered a thought that is really ugly inner dialogue. Mm -hmm. And that's where we as humans have an opportunity to watch our thinking. So 
When you're having a really rough day emotionally around your work, I want you to look at what triggered it, look at, like, kind of get to know your pattern in a very compassionate way, or curious maybe, might be easier. Mm -hmm. And what thought, what circumstance triggered me feeling awful? What is the emotion? And then, but what is the thought? And it's like, oh, I'm never gonna, like if you can hear yourself say out loud the inner dialogue, you lighten the load because you're not believing it, you're observing it. So most of us, when we have zero months, believe it's not gonna work, it's not worth it, we're doing a horrible job, I'm failing. That we, and then when we will look for evidence of that, and we will see other attorneys that have been doing it five years on their own, and we'll look at their study months and their revenue, and we'll, and we'll make it mean we can't make it. Mm -hmm. So that's the high achiever mindset. It's very easily triggered that way. It's actually what probably motivated you. When you got a D on a test, did you like turn around and walk away? No, no. we're harder. You double down, and that's what we keep doing. Yeah. And it's not helpful in the energy of mm -hmm. running a business. We wear, we can burn ourselves out as quickly in a own business ownership role as we can. That's a lot of the work I do. We can do it as quickly because it's mindset that's that doesn't it doesn't go away yeah. when we start running a business. So. I, it, I hope that's helpful. It's it really is. identifying and watching your thinking, even if it's the ugly judge in your head, it will lighten the load. You'll realize, oh, I'm believing this isn't gonna work. That's not, I'm not in that today. You don't move mm -hmm. too fast through that, but you really identify what you're making that, whatever data, what you're making that mean. Yeah. And it's a kind way, it is hard for, um, overachievers to be kind to yourselves it's probably the most powerful tool yeah. is to be curious in those moments and be really compassionate you've been working so hard and cheer yourself up in a really authentic way not a like oh it doesn't matter I'm gonna go watch Netflix all day but really take care of yourself there yeah it's I just so that. normal yeah it's so normal it I, is. I have an example I don't yes. know if this helps yeah, yeah. I, 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 I my first hundred K year I'm gonna count it was really 97 and I was we are in a coaching school that it's a big deal that you mm -hmm. get this award, you're on stage, you're recognized. I wanted to please my coach, my head coach. I worked for her and I was miserable because I wasn't making that dollar amount. But I was like, when I didn't think about that, I was having an amazing business and not many coaches have thriving financial businesses. Yeah. It's, it's very, you, you have to have a certain skill set. and I'm a businesswoman, so mm -hmm. it was a fun thing to, to bring to life. I beat myself up for the 97K year. Like oh. you wouldn't believe. And I finally was on the phone with a coach yeah. in this transition. And she goes, no, what What did you just say? Yeah. And it was like, oh, wait. And I, I literally in my body finally was, oh, I made 97K. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm like who cares? It was 50 the year yes. before, who does yes. that? Who is, and I'm a late in life, you know, solopreneur. I started my business when I was 55. And who does that? Mm -hmm. So then I will remind myself, these are these places where you do need to be your own cheerleader. Yeah. And look, are you looking at the gap? I've had a podcast on this. Are you looking at the gap or are you looking at what you've done? Mm -hmm. Our brain will create so much more if you look what you've done, mm -hmm. even if it's just one client you've sold. So that would be my recommendation there. Never look at the gap. Mind the gap when you're in London, yeah. but not, yeah. not in your business. You really want to look at what you've been achieving because that's the best motivational strategy. Yeah. Okay, I love that, I love that. Now, let's talk about one last thing that I've noticed a lot of attorneys doing. So, they started off year one in practice, maybe making 50,000 a year. Then they moved into year two and they were at 75,000. Now they're at year 10 and they are at half a million. They're at one million. But in their mind, oh. they are still at the 50,000. And so, they never actually loosen their purse strings. They never take advantage of the money. What do we do with the lawyers who are finally making money? money. This, is, this was the thing that they wanted. This was the place. If I make this much, I will have made it. I can show you on paper you have made it. I can show you that your bank statement shows you made it. Why do you not feel like you have made it? Oh. This is the biggest transition that owners make. Mm -hmm. It's the one, it's actually the one that I do the best, the biggest work in, in my practice. How you built your business is not how you run a business. Oh, Diana, say that one more time. Say it How slower. you start and begin a business is not how you run a business. Remember yes. we talked about scrappy? Be scrappy at the beginning. 
If you love making graphics, make your own. If you, like I found places that I like doing some of my own work in the background and there's other places like I have not touched some things mm -hmm. since year one, mm -hmm. like that I will always have a, an assistant. But when you get into that space that your consultant, your friends, you're watching other attorneys maybe live a lifestyle that you're jealous of, but you, you think you can't, you're not giving yourself permission for, that is when you're not, you're not stepping into what you've created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think there's some ways that you can do this in an under, I really wanna give you as many tips that you can start being your own best coach. And it is not celebrating what you've done. So if you don't really take a lot of time to really celebrate your years, I had trouble with this at first because again, you saw me with the 97, the 50, where I started really getting more traction and loving my business was when I started every quarter having a retreat and just doing my numbers and celebrating what I've done. That's amazing. And every and so you can do this on a Friday. It, you can do it. I have journals that like my new planner is like totally a woo-woo life coach planner. <laughs> and I'm realizing I'm using the spaces because yeah. I'm a Google, you know, I use my calendar, but I am in this space of like my ideas and really honoring what I'm stepping into right now. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, that's part of the, the, the thing. The way that we, in scarcity, built a business from zero mm -hmm. is not the way we run it. And stepping into maturity is bringing in um, consultants, it's bringing in people to look at your money in a bookkeeper kind of way, and I think Nermeen does that already for you. It's really looking at, um, what have I really built? What do I want to do with this? Now yes. money is, is a tool. Yes. Your scrappiness was the tool to create money. You Now you have to admit you know how to create money. Yeah. What are ways that you love creating money? Yeah. What are ways that you, and how do I want to honor? Mm -hmm. And making sure you're paying yourself. Mm -hmm. When I, my business has become happier and more fun. I've made the same amount of money for three years in a row. And those are the most different three years of my life. I'm telling you the enjoyment and now energetically I'm, I'm on multiplying. Yeah. I know it, but yeah. it's the staying with myself during those three years and stepping into a very mature, future-oriented business owner. Mm -hmm. And now I love what I'm doing. Yeah. Year two, I hustled still. Uh -huh. and, hustle, and it, hate yes. that word. Oh, Terrible. hustle does not, hustle is going back to our burnout cycle yes, that we left it is. the it life is. we had. Yeah. yeah. Is, that, sure. is that clear enough? Yes, I think that that's fantastic. And I think Dana has shared with us some really, really important things here and Part of the reason that we're having this conversation is because I'm obviously seeing this a lot as a consultant. She's seeing it a lot as On a coach. On the other side, yes. And we just wanted you to know that it's normal to have these behaviors. And by the way, you're not the only one, yeah. right? I know a lot of attorneys think, oh, it's just me who feels this way about money and it's just me. Oh, it's universal. Yes. It's the highest yes. trigger. It's our highest trigger. Yes. It's the, we think we're gonna die if our bank account's zero. Like mm -hmm. literally that's what our body mm -hmm. is doing. Mm -hmm. And so there's so many things that if we can be really, this is where self-care, not buffering, you know, not just getting away from it, but after you've really had a big day mm -hmm. and it didn't go as you planned, it's like that is when you, if you're an extrovert like me, we've been talking about this, <laughs> extrovert, I go and I have time with a friend that can hear that out. Or I, you can isolate when you've had too much of people and you really just do the order the yummiest dinner you've had and just take care of yourself. And yep. let your body, we are animal bodies, it's like letting your body calm down again. You're gonna be great tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Don't, like really mm -hmm. giving yourself some space to have a human experience within business building. It yeah. is not for sissies. This is yeah. really brave, brave work to do things that are so new to you that they trigger everything. And yeah. you will become the business owner you're dreaming of. It's just keep stepping. Yeah. Well, this was so amazing. This oh my so God. Fun. Okay, so listen everyone, all the comments or all the links are below. Information for Diana is below. Please reach out to her if you wanna work with her. I would be so happy if you did because there are things that consultants, no matter how we good we are, we just can't go there with you because we don't know how to, right? And I just know this about, that. I wanna say this. Yeah. And I, I think the reason I said yes to this podcast and I love Nermeen, is we know the people that we come across, across that they will know when it's the right time to hire us. But mm -hmm. sometimes you need a little data. And I am not that coach. I have a little like pissiness right now about how every time somebody gets on the phone to talk to a coach, it's a six month engagement and it's yep. this much money yep. and you have to make a decision in 40 minutes. Yep. 
that is not how I roll. And I want to be showing up different. And I, I think knowing that, it, like, well, let's just have a conversation. Let me encourage you. Sometimes people talking to a coach for 40 minutes can be all they need mm -hmm. to make that next big decision. Yeah. And then they'll know. But if you're in a big decision, if you're in a big transformation, if you have never, ever sold a thing, and now you're in business development, in your, and you're a huge expert, that is also a great time to hire a coach. Because it's just, it, it knocks at, it robs you of the expertise yeah. and being able to share that with the world. You want to get as quickly into those first clients and get things rolling. Yes. Yes. So both things, look at your numbers, look at yes. the data. But if you are getting frozen and stuck, give yourself the gift of coaching. And if you find yourself crying or anything yeah. like that, or getting angry, Which or totally just normal. very I have heard it all. <laughs> Yeah, definitely do reach out to Diana or any other coach that you might know. We want you to know yes. that like this is all normal. This is part of the growth process. Even when you've had your practice for 10 years, there's still so much growing to do. So, you know, every it little never evolution, stops. it doesn't stop because we're humans and we yeah. crave growth. And being a high achiever and a business owner is a little bit of a curse because we mm -hmm. always want it to be a big next goal that actually got in my way. And so it's like, we really have to just see how we're using our goals mm -hmm. and high achievement against ourselves. It's just, you just be gentle with yourself here and keep going. Yeah, you hear that high achievers? Just be gentle. Just be gentle yes. and keep going. Yes, and on that note, we're gonna let you be gentle to yourself and to keep going. Rock it. You need to reach out to us, we're here. Yep. Thank you so much for listening All right. today. That was fun. Bye, Bye everyone. Hey law firm owners, thanks so much for listening in to another episode of the Wildly Successful Law Firm Podcast. I so appreciate your support and being here. Please, please, please take two seconds to subscribe to the podcast or to leave a review. And don't forget to sign up for our newsletter because I do send a lot of specials and offers and just cool things via email once every week. The link to sign up is below. Thank you so much again for supporting me. I am here to help you grow your wildly successful law firm. Thank you.